Today we're going to talk about how superfoods can actually increase your health and physiology. Because right after I did my intermittent fasting talk and my interval training talk, pretty soon I started to get bombarded with questions on what I take in my smoothies, what do I eat, what do I do this, that, that, and so I decided since superfoods are kind of a big part of my diet, I decided to actually make a talk on it and so it can kind of just answer all of those questions there. Now when we're talking about what superfoods do with your health and physiology, I first want to talk about just the chiropractic model of health first. And what we're looking at there is we're looking at care. We, we go by a, a system of a term called vitalism and holism where that's kind of the premise that we believe the body is self-regulating and self-healing. You know, you don't need to add things, subtract things. So what that comes down to, it comes down to providing treatment or care that actually supports your body's healing ability. It supports your immune system. So anything that doesn't do that, you necessarily shouldn't be doing that for health because that wouldn't make any sense. You want to support the body. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to just alleviate symptoms of a believed to be weakened body that's rendered dysfunctional and rendered unable to heal itself properly. You know, because honestly, if you cut yourself on the arm, do you need a special pill, lotion, or potion to heal that, or can your body actually heal it on its own? It can heal it on its own, exactly. So it's the same thing with animals. When biologists look at a sick animal species, do they, you know, they look at what kind of medication they can give that animal? Do they look at that, or do they look at well, let's optimize their food, their diet, their environment, and let's get them healthy that way. And since we're an animal species, we should be doing the same thing. So in my talks, I like to talk about how we can apply different things that increases one's health and physiology. And I usually talk about, you know, we can talk about chiropractic, exercise, this and that, but today we're going to talk about superfoods and how that can actually increase one's health and physiology. And so I'm going to go over my top five superfoods today. I was going to go over my top 10, but I realized there's so much information on each one that would have been impossible to even keep it down under 40 minutes. So we're going to go by top five. Maybe we'll do a part two in the future. So what are superfoods? Now, when I talk about superfoods, I look at, I, I always go to David Wolf, and he wrote this book called Superfoods, and it's basically the encyclopedia of all superfoods because that's a kind of a widely used term and it's an incorrectly used term now you know people are saying oh kale the new superfood almonds a great superfood those aren't superfoods superfoods have a huge immense history and David Wolf actually broke down three of the healthiest foods into three categories and what it is is there's raw living plant foods that would be like where kale and broccoli fit in garlic there's superfoods and there's super herbs and super herbs be things like uh, you know turmeric and stuff like that. So with superfoods, what makes them special is that they have a dozen or more distinct properties of them. They don't just have one or two cool properties, they have over a dozen. And they're both a food and a medicine. And they're very potent, super concentrated, they are nutrient rich. So basically, if you consume superfoods as part of your daily diet, you're basically going to guarantee that you're get, your body's getting all the healthy nutrients that it needs to thrive. And so that's, that's what's great about them. You're basically getting more bang for your buck with these superfoods. Again, they contain all the nutrients required for the body to be healthy. And when we look at nutrition labels, you know, you're looking at a nutrition label, you're going to see calories, fats, proteins, carbs, and, you know, vitamin A, B, C. That's not even half the picture of what's in a food. In fact, they've now discovered over a thousand enzymes, coenzymes, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, all sorts of things that's not even a part of the food label. So the food label does not tell you anything. I mean, you can look at a nutrition label of an apple and you're like, oh, that's not very remarkable. It's because it doesn't show you the, the hundreds of trace minerals and vitamins it has because they don't show that on the label. And everything works in synergy in the body to give you the effect. And what you're going to find out is a common theme for these foods is that they all work to preload your immune system. And again, I always stress this, your immune system is a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. Exactly. So we should aim at things to preload our immune system to get healthy instead of always chemically inhibiting our immune system. Every time we experience a symptom, you know, we always want to take something to block, to take that symptom away, which actually blocks your immune system from working. And if you don't let it to work, it's going to get weaker every time, every time. So 
We want to instead do things that increase your body's immune system so we can fight our own pathogens naturally. So the first superfood I want to talk about is the goji berry. And the goji berry, you're going to see they range from yellow to orange to red. When you're looking in the supermarket, you want to find that deep red color. You really want to look for that color. And it, they always kind of dry them out because it helps preserve them and uh, keep them healthy. And these have been around for over 5,000 years and they're native to Asia. And you're going to see like the Chinese, the Mongolians, they all consume these goji berries. And what's interesting is that the special province of China, the certain province of China where the goji berry is actually native to, they actually have the most centenarians that have ever lived. And centenarians are people that live over 100. You know, so they're, and not only are they aging a lot less than the other people, they're aging more gracefully. You know, so you're seeing these 100 guys, they look like they're 55. I mean, they're aging perfectly. And that just kind of highlights the relationship between the goji berry and longevity and uh, anti-aging. And what's cool is when you're looking at the benefits, it's a, it's a highly adaptogenic berry. And what that means, an adaptogen, it means that it normalizes your hormones. It literally acts on the adrenals directly, the thyroid, all your endocrine system, because what it does is it allows your body to adapt to stress more properly. So things like stress hormones, we're usually in this fight or flight state all the time where we have tons of cortisol in our system. The goji berry actually helps lower cortisol. It helps lower your hormones, the stress hormones, and so it makes you able to adapt to stress better. Because you're never going to get rid of your stress. Once you get rid of a huge stressor in your life, another one comes. We never can get rid of stress, but we can change the way we adapt to stress. And how you adapt to stress is really what determines your health. It's all about how you adapt. So this probably, to me, this is the coolest thing about the goji berry is that its effects on longevity, stamina, strength, and sexual energy. And what's so cool about it and where it gets these properties is that it's the only food known that actually increases your body to naturally secrete more HGH, human growth hormone. It's the only food that does that. So I know in like my interval training and my intermittent fasting, I talked about ways for your body to do that, but this is actually just a certain food you eat that literally acts directly on your pituitary and your pineal glands to increase the secretion of human growth hormone naturally. And we all know that human growth hormones like your fitness hormone, your longevity hormone, your anti-aging hormone that keeps you looking good throughout your years. So another benefit is that it's a complete source of protein and most people who are especially vegetarian are looking for ways to get a complete protein source when they don't eat meat. Well the goji berry is one of the examples of a complete source of protein that's vegetarian in nature. And it also has 21 trace minerals. Those minerals you won't see on the nutrition label but there's 21 trace minerals there. And it also has a huge effect on your vision. It has one of the highest contents of zeaxanthin and lutein, which is all essential for eye health. Now, when you're going to the market, you again, we talked about you want that rich red color, but you also want to make sure that it's a moist berry. Most of them that you're going to find are just completely dried out. And so those rid a lot of the nutrients out there. So you want to look for 100% raw, organic, moist, and a dark red color when you're going there. And you can eat those. Things are easy to just to eat as a snack. They're pretty tasty. Or you can put them in a smoothie. But the good stuff, I don't like to put them in a smoothie. I just like to eat them, you know. The stuff that I don't really like the taste very much, I just throw them in my smoothie, add a ton of berries, and it kind of takes away all the taste, and I'm getting all the benefits that way. So my second superfood that I want to talk about is cacao, or chocolate. Now, cacao is actually the chocolate bean where chocolate comes from. And got news for you, chocolate only has one ingredient, and that's cacao. It does not include, you know, butter, dairy, it doesn't include sugar, it doesn't include chemical additives. So the Hershey's chocolate bars, that's not chocolate. It's not. So it only, it only has one ingredient, and that's the cacao bean. Native in South America and Central America, and if you translate the species, it literally means the food of the gods. That's what, ha yeah, men's history. And what was cool is that the Mayans and the Aztecs, they, view, they viewed this bean as so valuable that they actually used that as money instead of gold. They actually valued the cacao bean over gold mm -hmm. for money. It's the m so, fun fact, it is literally the highest antioxidant food on the planet. 
and people say, oh no, the acais or pomegranate or blueberries. What if I told you that cacao has more antioxidants than the goji berry, red wine, blueberries, pomegranate, and blueberries combined? I mean, it's not even close. Cacao literally has that many antioxidants. And in, in addition, it's also the number one source of magnesium in any food. And magnesium happens to be the number one most efficient mineral in the US, maybe the world. And magnesium is so vital, and the reason why is it's mostly the effects it has on heart health. Because what it does is it relaxes everything. Calcium and magnesium oppose each other. Calcium is more about muscle contraction, magnesium about muscle relaxation. So what it does, think about if you allow your arteries and your veins to dilate and relax, you're going to massively increase the oxygen and nutrient flow in your body. You're going to allow that heart to really breathe a sigh of relief. You're just going to allow everything to run smoothly. But not only does it relax like the smooth muscle like in your arteries, but it relaxes your skeletal muscles. So if you have muscle cramping, muscle soreness, magnesium is huge. Make sure though you don't take magnesium oxide, very bio unavailable. It's going to get the digestive system moving, it relaxes it all down, pushes everything down, good for bowel movements, bone health. And also, it's very high in a compound called theobromine, which again, also acts directly on the arteries to dilate them, taking pressure off the heart. And it also is very rich in tryptophan. And tryptophan's a precursor to your feel-good hormone serotonin, and that's gonna help people with kind of like some mood swings, mood disorders, stuff like that. The third one, maca root. So maca's a root native to the Peruvian Andes. It's also known as the Andes aphrodisiac one of the strongest aphrodisiacs in a food source. It's actually, what I didn't know, it's actually part of the cruciferous family of plants. So it's in the same family as like your you know, broccoli, spinach, kale. And uh, what's interesting is at the very height of the Incan Empire, what they did is they consumed a mass amounts of maca before entering battle, before conquering different cities. And the reason why is because it made them fiercely strong, gave them a ton of stamina, strength, and so they would, they would basically preload up on that, they'd go to war, and after they conquered these cities, afterwards, they would actually be banned from taking maca. And they did that in order to protect the woman from the excessive sexual desires of the men. Because it's that strong of an aphrodisiac. I'm not making this up. So they literally would ban it, and they'd only allow them to use it when they're entering battle. Because obviously you want that strength and stamina for that. But It's also grown at about nine to 10,000 feet in altitude, so it does make it the highest altitude crop on Earth. And it's not only just used by humans, but it's also used for a lot of animals, fertility issues as well. And benefits, again, include libido enhancing, fertility, strength, stamina. It's another adaptogen, same like as the goji berry, so it's gonna neutralize your hormones. I mean, that's good for both males and females alike. It's going to act directly on the thyroid and the adrenals to help calm down those stress hormones. And it also is very good for females with menstrual ir irregularities, especially with pe them with their suffering from like mood swings and uh, hot flashes, very good. And when you're going to the supermarket, you want it's, it's available in a powder. Just make sure that it's raw and organic, just like always. I use about a tablespoon in my smoothies. And that's probably a pretty good dose right there, about a tablespoon. I do it about two to three times a week with that. The next one, these last two are gonna, there's a lot more information on. These have a huge immense history. And the first one is gonna be honey and bee pollen. So any type of bee product. And what's interesting is that next to, these are next to Pharaoh's signature in like ancient Egypt on their important documents were bee symbols on there. The uh, famous, Greek vegetarian Pythagoras consumed bee pollen and bee products daily, as did his students. And that helped him for stamina and stuff like that. The Egyptians actually offered this bee pollen and stuff to the, actually the Egyptian gods. So they actually offered that to them. It was a very prominent food at the ancient Olympic Games of Greece. And is because of the, um, you know, the strength, endurance, energy factors that we're gonna go into, but it was the number one food there for the ancient Olympic Games. And Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, he actually was quoted saying, honey is the remedy for all diseases. So honey, there's, there's so many qualities on that, I can't even get into it. But when you're talking about bee products, we gotta look at the source, the honeybee, which are actually 
almost going extinct nowadays with our practices right now, and we'll go into that. But some interesting facts about bees. Honeybees visit two million flowers to make one pound jar of honey. Two million flowers. Bees in a hive, they actually fly 55,000 miles total to make one jar of honey. The average worker bee in their entire lifetime makes only one twelfth of a tablespoon of honey. All worker bees are female. Honey bees are the only insect that produce food for humans. I didn't know that. And they are the only, honey bees produce the only food that never spoils, literally will never spoil. They actually found edible honey in Egyptian tombs that was still edible and didn't spoil. Mm, Egyptian tombs, I think that's a long time ago. <laughs> so when we're talking about just honey itself, not bee pollen, but honey, one of the big qualities is that when you're consuming it in the raw organic form, it's, it's one of the highest vibrational foods on the planet, rich in minerals, probiotics, antioxidants, and enzymes. And it's got to be raw. If it's not raw, you're not going to have the live enzymes. And that's one of the big properties of honey. It's great for gastrointestinal issues. It's very good for using topically on wounds. And I think that's because of the strong antioxidant as well as the, uh, the uh, enzyme content, the live enzyme content. Really good for healing wounds, especially like Manuka honey. It's like another example of a complete source of protein. And just as a side note, you never want to consume honey if you have diabetes, pre-diabetes, or any type of cancer, because cancer cells literally feed off sugar. Doesn't matter what kind of sugar, doesn't matter the health qualities, if it's got this sugar, you just want to avoid it for those situations. So if you got that, you don't want to consume the honey. Now, bee pollen. So we're going to switch gears here to bee pollen. Bee pollen contains nearly all the nutrients required for humans just the bee pollen alone. It's known for its sexual health, it's a potent aphrodisiac, aids in fertility, um, it helps people with prostate issues, and it definitely rejuvenates your sexual organs by increasing your seminal substances from bee pollen. And again, one of the biggest things is that it has huge properties of strength, endurance, energy, speed, recovery, muscle growth, and definition. And that's a whole mouthful, but the British Sports Council actually showed that when the athletes consumed a bee pollen supplement every day, their strength increased nearly 40 to 50 percent, and that's significant. In the 1972 Olympic Finnish track team, they literally swept the entire Olympics. They got gold, didn't lose once, and their coach attributes their success to their daily supplementation of bee pollen. And they said that he noticed huge increases in strength, speed, energy, without zero side effects. And the British Royal Society also noticed that it, adults who took it regularly actually showed an increase in height. I'm skeptical about that fact, but it was in the book. I don't know. And it's very promising for allergies. It actually can lower your histamine response to a lot of things. So it's actually very good for allergies if you're suffering from allergies like that. You want to make sure it's local to your area though if you consume it. And you got to make sure it's raw and organic. And here's the reason why. Honey or honey bees actually feed on their own honey. They don't consume a lot of it, but they actually feed on the honey. So what happens is that with all this other inhumane practices going on, they're now they're now, instead of using the honey, because they're taking all the honey away from the honeybees, so now they're feeding the honeybees high fructose corn syrup. No. Mm. So now it changes the entire nutrient profile of this. It's not the same, and it's also they're you know, putting tons amount of pesticides. They're very unsustainable practices. So you gotta make sure that it's raw and organic. That's vital. Otherwise, it's toxic. So most of the stuff at Costco is garbage. Coconuts. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, just speaking of the bee pollen, about one tablespoon a day is suitable for the benefits of therapeutic dose, and that I'd actually recommend doing daily of bee pollen. Now, for coconuts, coconuts is this is definitely a last but not least uh, superfood we're going to talk about because this is perhaps probably the best superfood known to man and woman. Coconut oil, first of all, the coconut palm trees. They're, they need warm weather, they need a very humid, dense rainfall. Um, they need it to be very warm. So they're native in the tropical areas, Hawaii, you know, 
Philippines, uh, Mexico, but they can also grow places like Southern California. But since Southern California doesn't have the humidity and the warmth needed to sustain a coconut, our trees don't grow coconuts. So the whole time I thought it was just all different species. There's actually the same thing. They just, we just don't have the environment to suit the coconut formation. And they're again, they're native to the Philippine area. It's the highest producer of them. And the coconut palm trees in Sanskrit actually means the tree that supplies all that is needed to live. So if you were literally stranded on an island, you could survive on coconuts. And when you're talking about coconuts, you got the coconut water, and then you got the coconut meat, the coconut flesh. And those are both important, but first we're gonna go into the water benefits. The cool thing is that it's literally a natural water filter. In fact, it takes nine months to filter the water in a coconut because the water has to go through all those thick fibers and go through everything, and finally it ends up in that nice sterile shell. But it's a nine month process for each coconut to gain that water in there. So it is all a natural water filter it's the highest source of electrolytes in nature. And so when, you know, in sports, when people are consuming Gatorades, it's like, why? It's all added artificially. You got the high fructose corn syrup. In fact, coconut water, I mean, their potassium and sodium content, potassium alone outnumbers the Gatorade 50 to one, maybe 100 to one. You're talking about like 550 milligrams versus maybe 30. I mean, it's not even close. So why aren't we taking coconut water? I don't know, marketing perhaps. And uh, what's cool is that it's nearly identical to human blood plasma, coconut water. And so it makes it a universal donor for blood. And what happened is that this is highly used in World War II, especially in the Pacific, because what they noticed is that all the soldiers on both sides, you know, they actually, they actually used coconut water as instant blood transfusions in the World War II. I didn't know that. So, our blood is made up of 55% plasma and 45% hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is, is essentially transformed plant blood, like chlorophyll. So if you drink a drink of 55% coconut water and 45% green juice, or like a wheatgrass, you're literally giving yourself an instant blood transfusion. So if you want to clean your blood, there's really no better way than doing that right there. Because it fits the profile, fits everything. So now let's move on to the coconut meat, because the coconut meat, I mean, that's probably the most nutritious thing you can eat. And this is the coconut meat, the coconut flesh is where you get the coconut cream from, it's where they extract the oil from, so all of this comes from the meat. And the biggest thing is it's saturated fat content that has the most benefits. And I know, saturated fat, oh my gosh, run. It's, you gotta realize that it's completely different in nature than the animal fats. The coconut saturated fat is not even close to animal fat. First of all, it's in its raw form, and second of all, it's in the form of medium chain fatty acids. So most of the saturated fats in animals are very long chain. So they take a while to digest. These medium chain fatty acids basically instantly get absorbed in the body, metabolize, and it increases your metabolism significantly. And they have antiviral, antifungal, antimicrobial benefits. And one of the big reasons is the lauric acid in it, the content. And so what's cool is that when you take the coconut, the medium chain fatty acids in there are so similar to the fats of your lipid membranes, of your uh, pathogens, your bacteria, viruses, fungi, that that fat can actually literally invade into the cell membranes and cause those viruses and microbes to release all the contents in your body, which allows for easy prey for your white blood cells. So it literally destroys all of that. And that's what's so cool about it. And it's a building block because every, you know, you have trillions and trillions of cells. Every one of those has a lipid membrane and this literally acts as an instant building block for those membranes. Makes them very healthy. Saturated fat is vital and it doesn't get stored as fat. I know. It's weird. You can literally eat six tablespoons of coconut oil a day and you will lose weight and you will lose circumference around your waist. And what they did is in the 1940s, farmers were trying to figure out a way to increase the fatness of their cattle. And so what they did is they started feeding them a ton of coconut oil. And they're like, yes, we got it. So they realized all their cattle was turning muscular and thin and robust and healthy. And they're like, what the hell? This is not what I wanted. And so they instantly stopped that practice. And coconut oil kind of got a bad name for that, but it was a lot of the propaganda. So they went to more of the partially uh, hydrogenized soybean oil instead. 
And what they realized when cows took that in, they would have to eat a lot less of that and they would gain so much weight and make them fat. But it's obviously not healthy, but that's the effect those farmers were looking for. They wanted their cattle to get fat fast so they could slaughter them and sell it. But the coconut oil, they ate tons of it and they actually lost weight. They were thin, healthy. I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> And so it's speeding up metabolism, reduces belly fat. Now, one of the best things coconut oil does is it increases thyroid function. So anyone with thyroid issues, especially, I mean, who doesn't have hypothyroidism? And I see that every day, countless times a day. It literally speeds up your thyroid gland naturally. And what it does is, it's, it's interesting because it gets kind of confusing, but when you increase your thyroid function, that thyroid then is allowed to convert your LDL cholesterol into things like uh, these really uh, healthy steroids, such as DHEA and a substance called pregnenolone. And so that's why all the studies now are showing that you're actually increasing HDL, decreasing LDL, and you're, severe, and you're uh, severely decreasing arterial plaque when you consume coconut oil. And they're like, how can this be? It's a saturated fat. This makes no sense. It's all about what it does to the thyroid, and it supports healthy cholesterol formation in the liver. And so when you're increasing that thyroid, it converts that LDL. So it's literally taking the LDL out of the body and making it into these DHA, pregnenolones, these healthy steroids that even help more of the longevity, more of your muscle growth, uh, anti-aging, but also prevents obesity, prevents cancer. And pregnenolone also, too, acts directly cosmetically because it it aids in skin health, it aids in uh, eye health, you know, the bags under our eyes. It stimulates muscle contraction in your face to build those back up. It, it, I mean, it, it's used for everything. And so you're gonna get healthy circulation to the skin, increase your memory, nerve function, and, oh wait, there's more benefits, hang on. It increases your, so if you take coconut oil with omega-3 fats, you're gonna get twice the effect because coconut oil allows you to absorb that a lot better, twice as likely. It's going to increase sexual health, pregnancy, and fertility. And this is cool because it's the best builder. When you take the coconut oil, it's the best builder of male sexual fluids. And it also allows it to get, in women, it allows it to get instantly uh, transformed as, into breast milk. So it makes it very important in pregnancy, post-pregnancy, fertility, and for the baby too as well. And oral health. So all the studies now are showing that it's superior to toothpaste now. And I wonder why, antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral, isn't that what you want in a mouth rinse? It makes sense, and especially for gum health as well. It cleans the teeth and gums, but it also kills the number one bacteria that causes tooth decay, and that's uh, Streptococcus mutans. And uh, again, you're not gonna have the crappy stuff that toothpaste has, like the fluoride, the triclosan, and the sodium laureth sulfate, which are all toxic stuff in toothpaste, commercial toothpaste. And so, a new study that just came out from Athlone Institute of Technology, they literally came out, coconut oil is better for your teeth than toothpaste. And this is just a simple remedy on how to make your own toothpaste. Very, very easy, three ingredients. You don't even need the peppermint essential oil, baking soda, coconut oil and essential peppermint essential oil. It's all you need to make your own toothpaste. Most of the time, I just take a little glob of coconut oil and just brush my teeth in. It leaves your teeth feeling nice and shiny and smooth. But I mean, do it with the baking soda and the peppermint. You're gonna have a nice fresh breath after that. And then I also wanna talk about oil pulling because that's just another way you can do it. Same thing, it's, instead of brushing your teeth with it, you're essentially just gonna put a couple tablespoons in your mouth, gargle it, I like to do about 10 minutes, because what that's gonna do when you gargle that oil, it's gonna go into all those nooks and crannies of your teeth and gums, bind to all those uh, harmful microbes, and then you spit it out for 10 minutes. So it literally is an easy way to get rid of all that bacteria in your mouth, and it's a, just an excellent form of oral health. So recommendations, like when you're looking at coconuts, you wanna look for the brown, hairy coconuts. You wanna, for coconut water, you wanna prefer something in glass or cardboard. Anything in plastic, you just you want to avoid because the plastic does leach out into the substance. Um, you want to look for a cold pressed. Uh, coconuts are easily blended, um, but you can also eat it too. It's great. And uh, ideally, you should use that the sole oil for cooking. It is the most high stable for uh, cooking at high temperatures. 
far superior to olive oil, and that's because of the healthy saturated fat content. It doesn't denature. And um, a therapeutic dose, so if you want to get these benefits from coconut, you've got to consume at least three tablespoons. I know it seems like a lot. I mean, right there, that's like 42 grams of fat right there, which would freak some people out. Saturated fat, oh my gosh. If it works on cattle, it's going to work on you. I mean, literally, <laughs> it's awesome. And all the, there's not, literally not a negative study out there on coconut oil. If someone has it, show it to me, because it doesn't exist. And this is just kind of what I do. I took a picture of just stuff. On the mid middle picture, I just took a picture of you know basic superfoods that I consume. Uh, my Facebook and Instagram, I just posted different things. A little bonus one is avocado seeds, because we're kind of done there. But avocado seeds is actually <laughs> where 70% of your antioxidants of the avocado come from, and the nutrients. So if you're not consuming the avocado seed, you're missing out about 70% of all the benefits of avocado. It's hard as heck to eat. You, they recommend shaving it. I literally put it in my Vitamix and it blends it perfectly. So if you have a Vitamix, you're in luck. If you have like a kind of a lower grade blender, it's not gonna blend it too well. And you're gonna get these chunks of seeds. It has a little nutty flavor. It's not the best tasting, but if 70% of all the nutrients are in that thing, I'm gonna eat it. Yeah, the whole seed. Yep, on my shakes, I literally put the entire seed. Bigger the better. That's what I do. Giant. Yep, and so, yep, in the blender on the uh, left-hand side, at the very bottom, you'll see a big seed. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and juicing and everything. So that's how I incorporate it. The Vitamix is my best friend. I, they have tons of recipes on how to make these things tasty. You know, people combine coconut oil with uh, maca, coconut oil with cacao, and that can be good, and they can make these tasty treats. I don't have the patience or the gift of cooking to do any of that stuff, so I just put it in my Vitamix. I, could, I tend to not worry about the taste as much as the health benefits, so I'll just down it down in my Vitamix. It's easy, liquid form. But there, especially in that book that I share with you on that first slide, they have countless recipes on every single superfood. So if you wanted good recipes, that would be great. Anything else? You need part two. Part two, yes. <laughs> Six through ten. Well, if I had to add a part two, you definitely have to add your phytoplankton, your chlorif your uh, not chlorophyll, uh, chlorella, spirulina. There would be a lot of those. I just didn't have the time. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's coming. Thank you.